Well, when you deride the Green New Deal as a dream, yes, I do think that's a little patronizing. <laughs> yeah. the, the thing I would say about the speaker and the reputation that she has, I think she has established a reputation as, to some extent, the face of the so-called resistance to the Trump administration. And I use air quotes because the resistance is, at least insofar as we see it reflected in the Democratic leadership, at the very best contrived and limited, and at the very worst in a whole litany of policy areas, which I'm happy to unpack, unfortunately actively complicit with our kleptocrat in chief while mouthing resistance. And that's what prompted me to uh, run in the last cycle, knowing that corporate Democrats uh, repeatedly empower the right wing and seeing it repeatedly under the Democratic leadership in this Congress. Uh, at the end of the day, at the especially at a time like this, where so many things are at risk, where we do have fascism rising in the United States, this is a time for us to be absolutely bold in our response. And if the character of our response to the threat of fascism looks like trying to promote an outmoded, anachronistic vision of a center that has already eroded, promoting bipartisan corporate rule that the American people have repeatedly rejected then I fear, unfortunately, we might as well all just jump off of bridges or you know, off a cliff like lemmings, perhaps, because uh, we're going to need to do better than that. And the task of our generation, I think, is to overthrow corporate rule, to restore a meaningful democracy for, of, and by the people, and to particularly establish the kind of policies that we need at least to avert climate catastrophe, yeah. if not expand human rights to encompass health care and make education finally accessible to all Americans and end the scourge of homelessness and we can go on. <laughs>